Yo, we are trying to do romantic lighting here. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of new things, but first of all, hi, welcome or welcome back. My name is Chris. My artist name is Elanim. Thank you for being here. Whether you are new or a returning viewer, we are spicing things up. I guess most notably is that you're seeing my face. Hi, hi. <laughs> also, we'll say my cats are a little rowdy, so you might hear them in the background. We'll see. Also, what do we think? Do we like the mic in, in camera or do we prefer her out of frame? So yes, anyways, today we are gonna be doing my media journal flip through for 2023, right? My beautiful 2023 media journal flip through. Um, this has been a while in the making. I think I've recorded a iteration of this maybe two or three times already. And um, it's been it's been eventful to say the least, but we are gonna get through it. We are gonna finish it. Disclaimer, right? Because since it is a video that's been recorded in pieces, I might repeat myself a little bit. So just to make sure that everything flows right, I might pop in every so once in a while, every once in a while, that's the right way to say things, <laughs> every once in a while. For those of you who don't know, this is the Hobonichi Weeks, the regular, not the mega. That's the one I used for my media journal in 2023. And I used that to track things I watched, read, listened to, whether that be books, eBooks, audiobooks, fanfics, TV shows, movies, manga, manhwa, and everything that I deemed media, I guess. <laughs> It's just one way of tracking the media that you consume. As you know, I have tracked media in many different ways and eventually I will make a video. It's been on the back burner. I've had some planning sessions on it um, to create a video where I talk about the different ways that I have media journaled throughout the years and different ways that you can media journal also if you wanna implement that into your uh, journaling routine. I think it is one of the most amazing ways to memory keep. Even if you are someone who doesn't watch a lot of media, I think that there's something to be said about the type of person that you were when you watched, heard, or read something. And that in and of itself can be a time capsule. So I do think that there's a lot of value in media journaling. As you probably already know, I've talked countlessly about it. Let's see, any other housekeeping that I need to take care of before we jump into the flip through? I'm gonna be going through the entire journal and kind of like talking about what I recorded, things that I watched, just general commentary. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to do just a quick silent flip through for those of you that just wanna watch or just wanna see the spreads and don't really care about any of the commentary. You don't have to watch the director's cut. <laughs> if you will. So I will include that in the end. I'll make sure to do a timestamp for you guys so that it's quick and easy, nice and ready to go. Yeah, I think that that's all the housekeeping that I can think of. Let's go into the actual flip through with my hands. So let's jump right in. I have been really excited to film this video and really nervous to be honest. Um, I talked a lot about this media journal and I was so happy to be in it in 2023. Um, I miss it. <laughs> it is so great. If you want to get into media journaling or book journaling and you don't know where to start, I definitely recommend the whole Bunchy Weeks. It's so, it's such a simple form factor, right? And it's really easy to just kind of like Get your footing in so absolutely recommend it um i didn't have it for the whole year i technically started journaling in it every day or every week um starting august so everything else was backfilled and you'll see kind of like the difference in terms of how the setups are from when i was backfilling versus when i was filling it out on a daily slash weekly basis so Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we start off right away with this little deck four that I have. Right, and then I do have this cover, which I feel like absolutely influenced, and I'm sorry for the glare, right? It absolutely influenced me enjoying this so much. I love this cover. I think about taking it off this all the time and putting it on one of my new ones, but anyways. Um, and then I just have these um, Pokemon cards that I got from like a Happy Meal back when we were not boycotting McDonald's. Um, 
And so since I got them last year and I'm not really like a Pokemon aficionado, I don't really know anything about Pokemon, sadly. I just decided that I would keep it in here. I have a little postcard that I got from an art book that I bought. And then my little um, reference guide, which if you've seen my videos before, you know exactly what this is for. I'll talk about that a little later. And then I just tucked that in here and that lived in my media journal and will continue to live in here for the rest of its existence. Okay. I didn't really do anything with these beginning pages and I didn't really do anything with the monthlies. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of like move on from that. I did do two monthly spreads, but there's stuff in there that I would have to censor and I don't really feel like censoring them. So I'm just going to move past them. And we start here with November. So again, this is backfilled. Since it was backfill and I didn't really have like the day to day media thoughts, right? I backfilled it with a lot of images. So, what I did was I went through, and I do this every year, I went through my Tumblr and I kind of like went in and downloaded all of the media that I reblogged. I went through my Twitter and downloaded all the media that I retweeted and liked and put it in its respective week give or take right so most of what is within its weeks in terms of like me like um supplemental content right aside from just like what i wrote down is content that i found during that time period right so it's very time-based and then in terms of um keeping track of what i was watching what i was reading etc one of the things i do is i keep notes on my note app when i know that i'm not going to be coming in here every so often even when i do know that i'm updating it regularly i still like to write it in my notes um my notes app because i can forget i have terrible memory so i go ahead and put it in there something else that i do is i keep track of like the movies that i watch on letterboxd so that's another place that i can double check to see what i've watched and um story graph for books all of those links are below and then another thing is that in some of these platforms like netflix um i think hulu might have it too i know for sure netflix does some of them do most of them do um but not all of them like max you don't have it um they'll have your history your watch history so a lot of the stuff that i did was go through my watch histories in some of these places like crunchyroll um funimation netflix for sure um i went through the history and i put that in so most of that information i was able to get it back the only thing i wasn't really able to get was any manga or manhwa that i had read digitally i don't have a way of like backtracking i kind of like did some research with like messages that I sent my friends or my sister to kind of see what days were what so I did like a whole investigation to be able to backlog this um <laughs> but what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at is that there is a way to do that and so this is not like a hundred percent everything that I watched read or whatever but it is pretty darn close starting off strong with bullet uh bullet train um Dairy Girls, I uh, reblogged this poem and I went ahead and just stuck it in there. Let me go ahead and actually zoom you in a little more so you can see it better. Let's see here. And um, some of these spreads are not finished, as you can see. I am totally okay with that. I'm not gonna be going back in here. What is in here is what is in here. I think the only thing I have to go back and actually fill out is the last spread of the year. I don't think I actually filled that in because I was um, trialing my paper test B6 for that. So I might have to go in and do that. But aside from that, everything else is staying as it is. I um, retweet I, on Pinterest, download a lot of um, fan art. I was really into Mob Psycho 100 during this time. So there's some fan art from that. Um, pictures of Anya Taylor-Joy, who I love very much. I had watched Avatar, The Way of Water which I didn't like. <laughs> I was getting into Grey's Anatomy. Um, yeah, just like decorating it. Super cute. Um, JoJo's. Watched a lot of movies in this time frame. Um, and yeah, it's just... Oh, something else that I did was I would write down some of the quotes instead of just printing them. I really like this one. This is a quote from Tumblr. I went ahead and put their user there. So it says... Whenever I take a long car ride, I end up exhausted afterward. And I'm like, why am I so tired? I was just sitting around doing nothing all day. But the answer, as it turns out, is I was doing something. 
Riding in a car jars your body in many directions and requires constant micro-adjustments of your muscles just to stay in place and hold your normal posture. Because you're inside the car, inside the situation, it's easy not to notice all the extra work you're doing to maintain the status quo. There's all kind of work that we think of as free that requires spending energy. Concentrating, making decisions, managing anxiety, maintaining hypervigilance in an unfriendly environment, dealing with stereotype threats, processing a lot of sensory input, repairing skin cells damaged by sun exposure, trying to stay warm in a cold room. The next time you're tired from doing nothing, consider you're doing a lot of unnoticed extra work just to stay in place. Really love that. Um, so I went ahead and put that in there. Oh, I watched It for the first time. I watched uh, Roald Dahl's Matilda musical on Netflix. Watched that like three or four times. Um, and again, just more fan art. Um, this was a compilation on quotes on hands that I really liked. And I went ahead and just copied it down. That took two pages. So I went ahead and did that. There was not a lot that I watched this week. So I went ahead and just put in a quote. This is another one from Tumblr says i want it back equals i drag its dead weight forward like some people's minds jesus um <laughs> uh let's see i love your hands i am nothing and no one but i am everything in your hands and yeah just a compilation i love i love like web weaving and uh, compilation so i go ahead and do that i was keeping kind of like a commonplace ish system for quotes and stuff in here as i was um doing the media journal so that's why there's a lot of quotes this is some art that i came across around this week and i went ahead and just uh pasted it in because i didn't watch anything or read anything this week um oh and this is another quote by franny Choi. Somewhere there is a version of me that isn't neck deep in her invented filth. Which looks like, geez, right? Like, my goodness, some of these quotes. Fan art. Ooh, I watched The Banshees of Inishirin, so this quote is about that. Which, if you haven't watched The Banshees of Inishirin, geez, please do yourself a favor and watch it. It's so good. <sighs> but yeah, I just love The Banshees of Inishirin. Um, so this is a quote, again, from Tumblr. And who cares about being remembered if you aren't nice versus who cares about being nice if you aren't remembered? And how terrible small-scale tragedies can be even going up against giant horrors like a civil war? And what do you do if you hate your home and everyone in it? And how do you cope when someone you love uses your love for them to keep you away? Ah, oh, it's just so good. Oh, and then there's this quote from The Crucible that I found that I felt like was perfect for the Banshees of Inisherin. I may think of you softly from time to time, but I'll cut off my hand before I ever reach for you again. And then there was this um, art that I found that I also felt like kind of related to the Banshees of Inisherin, so I went ahead and pasted it in here. I want my life to be full of great moments. Great moments exist inside of ordinary moments. Try having a cup of tea. So here's your reminder to have a cup of tea. I'm not having tea. I'm having a glass of water, but I do that. <laughs> And then a picture of a release that came out for My Hero Academia. Some more fan art. Images. Here, I had just moved um, cross country and I was watching Squid Games. I was rewatching Squid Games. I was showing my dad who had never watched it before. And so I went in and even though I didn't um, actually find these arts... During this time, I went in, I went into my backlog and printed them out so that I can glue them in and commemorate that. I didn't do anything here. I was watching Grey's Anatomy. More Grey's Anatomy. I rewatched um, The Hunger Games. This is a quote from O'Malley. He says this, uh, you know, whenever anyone says something really funny and I laugh, I always look around to see if you think it's funny too. Even when you're not there, I still look around. Um, my Hero Academia, this fan art. I found this artist around this time on Twitter and I was obsessed. So I printed out all a bunch of their stuff and just decorated it with color pencil. More Grey's Anatomy. Lots of Grey's Anatomy. Oh, here I had watched Lord of the Rings for the first time. So I started watching Lord of the Rings and I went in and found some fan art on Twitter. And then you can see some more fan art over here. And I reblogged some content from uh tumblr once again and i went in and i went ahead and copied it into here oh my goodness and this quote this quote was everything to me <laughs> it's about frodo 
<sighs> the more despair I endure in life, the more I love Frodo. I'm so glad Tolkien wrote him like that. He was a hero and a broke him. He was given too much to carry. Frodo tried so hard for such a good cause and he broke. And the narrative has pity for him. The characters show him kindness. Even after victory, his hurt did not heal and it isn't considered his fault. He must go to the Undying Lands to seek out peace there. In universe, he is forgiven for being human. Don't be pedantic. <laughs> so don't be pedantic because, you know, he's not technically human, but you know. Um, and his great torment is recognized. He fell. He could not have done it alone. He is still a hero. And I think that is important. Maybe we only make it with the help of our friends. Maybe no one is an island. Maybe that is okay. And so I put this picture in here and put this quote around it because I felt like they worked well together. And a lot of the quotes that I end up putting here or that I end up blogging or things like that, obviously they're things that resonate with me. And yeah, I love beautiful words. Some Gojo and Ghetto because this is when uh, the new season came out. So everyone was drawing fan art or them. Some fan art from my hero as well this is something that i do on tumblr is i always try to reblog like a monthly quote every new month and i had reblog this one in april it is very cold walking into the long scraped april wind and this time of year there is no sunset just some movements inside the light and then a sinking away ah oh, it's so nice some more fan art nothing written in here oh tomie yeah, I was um, in my Junji Ito phase in this time. So there's some fan art. Oh, <laughs> okay. And this is when, um, so the Barbie uh, kind of like images came out and everybody was making fan art with their characters. Um, like, for example, this is from, uh, what's the word? Um, oh my, um, I have the DVD. Oh, blue... I can't remember the movie. I'm so sorry. But anyways, I love this fan art. And then um, Bakugo and Deku, who I love. Um, and then it was Bakugo's birthday, April 20th. And that's where we got cut off. <laughs> right at Bakugo's birthday. So you can see a little bit of my actual rig here. Excuse that. We're still working on backdrops here. We're keeping it authentic. <laughs> you know, I am of the thought of like... And I think I mentioned that in my previous journaling medley. That just get started right like I've been going back and forth on backdrops and lighting and all this good stuff for a while now and finally I was just like you know what I'm just gonna start you just gotta start you just gotta start end of the day right so excuse my less than optimal backdrop but I digress <laughs> so housekeeping the actual um foreground or not foreground what's the word for that the flat lay the flat lay is going to be different right so the only consistent thing here is the shirt <laughs> um but the flat lay is going to be different and then i'm going to go ahead and just backtrack a little bit i'm going to actually show you the two monthly spreads that i did end up making after i recorded that video at some point between then and now i went ahead and censored some of the stuff that i didn't want to show so i'll be able to at least show you some of the spreads so you can get an idea of what it is that i did there i only ended up doing two monthly spreads so it's not even that much to show you but i wanted to show it to you just uh, additionally so you can get some inspiration if you wanted it and just kind of explain where that came from as well after I show you that we'll jump into where we left off in April if I'm not mistaken because it was Bakugo's birthday so it would be April 20th oh and then what I was saying before I got cut off and I remember is that I am one of those people that <laughs> like knows fictional characters birthdays and like anniversaries and whatever I am ridiculous but it is who I am. Little tangent aside, let's go back. Let's get into the monthly. Do, 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 do. Okay, so this is what I did with the monthly in October. And essentially the reasoning for this, right, is because I collect a lot of fan art and uh, images and pictures and what have you from Tumblr, Twitter, from the different social media sites that I'm a part of. I collect a lot of them. I save them all the time throughout the month. Um, I go through little phases and I save all those images and then they're just there for the rest of eternity. Um, the most I'll get out of them is customizing my backgrounds and whatever on the phone, but I want to have them somewhere where I can look at them all the time. And so something that I used to do back in 2021, one of the ways that 
I did my memory keeping and my media journaling back then was on my iPad. So I used to do it digitally. And I had monthly spreads where I would use a lot of images, not exactly in this way, but this is very reminiscent of that style. So I just got images uh, from the month that I had saved. And uh, that could be like, for example, this is a Deku figure, a Deku figure that was uh, announced this month. And this is like just art that was released and an image of uh, Nanami from an episode that was released in the month, etc. Like this is a official Horikoshi art. As you can see, I am a huge uh, My Hero fan. Uh, I watched an Anya Taylor Joy movie this month. So essentially, it's just commemorating the things that I was enjoying during the month. And this one was printed on washi tape paper, uh, but the one in November was printed on matte sticker paper and you can immediately tell you can see the difference in terms of like vibrancy the thing is too that i don't have a laser jet a laser printer i have an inkjet and inkjet doesn't print very well on washi tape i found lately or i found recent i found out recently rather is what i'm trying to say that it is just not that great on inkjet you would really need a laser printer so on the flip side the inkjet prints beautifully on um on matte sticker paper. So this is a lot more vibrant. I like the vibe of the washi tape more, but you really can't be the vibrancy that you get with the matte sticker paper. So that's what that looks like. Excuse the little censorships, but there's just some stuff that should remain between me and just me. <laughs> okay, so we were in April, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we were here. Uh, Bakugo's birthday. Um, and I think I was struggling with the name for this and I'm pretty sure it's Perfect Blue really good movie psychological thriller a plus animation if you're into animated movies or shows definitely recommend if you haven't watched that yet there's that and then i watched powerpuff girls <laughs> um i was feeling nostalgic there's some uh image releases from official horikoshi art a chapter in my hero and yeah, my best friend, one of my best friends was watching Arcane for the first time and uh, we were sending each other fan art and this was one of the ones that I sent because he really was into Echo and Jinx. So I went ahead and pasted that to commemorate it, some more fan art. I just came to this life again, alive in my silent way. I love adding quotes, as you know. Oh, this was when I was playing Omori and then... Um, Tears of the Kingdom was released. So I had not played video games in a while. And then all of a sudden I played Dredge, then Omori, and then Tears of the Kingdom, like back to back. And Omori literally ruined my soul. Like I experienced so much heartbreak playing that game. Oh my goodness. Definitely recommend it. It is amazing, an amazing game, but please do check the trigger warnings if you're gonna check it out because it, it can be heavily triggering. Tri triggering, sorry. Um, and then aside from that, I was also watching my mister. I, my mister is a show that I watch every year and I was showing it to my mom. So we were watching it. As you can see here, I was starting to watch it and there is a compilations on Tumblr that I reblogged a while back and I decided that I wanted to print it out and put it in here. And a lot of the quotes, or at least some of them really resonated with what was happening with Amori. So I really liked the combination of the spread. Uh, for example, yes, there is a place where someone loves you before and after they learn what you are. Like some people would just write things and it's like, how, how? And and I I consider myself a poet, but even then, like just the love affair with words, right? Oh, my grief says the same thing. This isn't how it's supposed to be. This isn't how it's supposed to be. And the world laughs, holds my hope by the throat, says that this is how it is. And so this is, um, this was from the compilation from my mister, but it really resonated with what the storyline is around, uh, Omori. It's so sad. Um, but yeah, more my mister. And then here it is, uh, me writing a, um, a quote from Tumblr based on my mister. And then that I felt tied in really well with another post that I had reblogged about Queen Charlotte, which I had also started watching. So that's in there and just another still, some... Uh, more images with no writing that I just put in here. I was re-watching a Taiwan class because I was showing it to my mom. And then in my Legend of Zelda era, I was playing that a lot. I didn't write down. I'm not someone, I don't tend to write down the video games, which kind of sucks. I think I only wrote down those two. Oh, <laughs> and uh, those of you who know this, know what it is. And those of you who don't, you, sh you just needed to be there. 
You just need to be there. Twitter broke that day. It's all. I, it's all I gotta say. Some more fan art, and I had bought this washi tape at a shop, and in Belfast. So I went ahead and stuck that in there. Maybe we need every answer in the world to survive a single question. How long do we have each other? This is a quote from Queen Charlotte that I really liked. I was watching uh, Demon Slayer, so some fan art. Again, nothing written because this is all backlog. I wasn't actually filling this in as I was watching them. So unfortunately, I don't have like the live tweet version, <laughs> the live reaction version of some of the commentary, but it's what it is. Deeply apologize if you are not caught up on the My Hero manga. This is a spoiler for that. Oh, this is when I watched Nope, right? Yes, when I watched Nope. I watched Nope, I think like four times back to back. What a good movie. In fact, I'm like seeing that now and I want to rewatch Nope. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. And then see, I, I watched all of Jordan Peele around this time. A quote on Nope. I had read, let's see, did I read it prior? I don't know if I missed it or if it's after. I read a book. See, it's, aha, it came from the closet. Um, Queer Reflections of on Horror. And there, um, basically it is a book where it takes a bunch of horror movies and films and um, dissects them through a queer lens. And a lot of the movies that were on there, I had never watched because I have been a scaredy cat all my life, but recently have really liked horror. So I decided that I was going to go ahead and watch a lot of the movies that were in there, at least the ones that I was interested in. So that's why you see certain things like I watched, um, where is it? Nightmare on Elm Street. I watched, let's see, which one else? Sleepaway Camp, Slumber Party Mass. Actually, Slumber Party Massacre was not part of the book, but it was like recommended on Amazon. So I watched that. Sleepaway Camp was on there. Jennifer's Body. Oh my goodness. And that's, I also started watching A League of Our Own at this time. Good stuff. Bird Box Barcelona came out and didn't really like it. So then I watched Bird Box, which I did really enjoy the first time I watched it. Oh, Izuku's birthday. Um... The 15th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, July 15th. Oh, that's, I uh, I think I put this in twice, this quote. Did I not just read that? I feel like I, I read that like a couple minutes ago. Let's see. I just came to this life alive in my silent way. I did. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> cool, cool stuff. Oh, this is this little blurb on Transcendent Horror since I was watching some horror films. Watch the Cheetah Girls. I watched Nimona like five, Nimona like five times uh, last year, and it is now an Oscar-nominated film, as it rightfully deserves. To love someone is firstly to confess I am prepared to be devastated by you. Oh, so good. Watched Barbie, as you know, some little fan art on Barbenheimer. Barbie. I started the Lost Flowers. I went through like all of the Saw movies. Jane. Ugh. The highlight in media or at least one of the highlights in media from last year, definitely has to be Jane Eyre. I went into like a whole Jane Eyre cycle. It was the best of times and the worst of times. <laughs> I found Jane Eyre thrift shopping. I was not expecting, maybe I should turn off the lighting on this. Apologize about that. So Jane Eyre, I was going through the thrift store and came across a copy of Jane Eyre and I don't know what compelled me to get it other than the price. I don't, I'm not really sure why, but I did. And I got to tell you, it's one of my favorite books of all time. I did not expect myself to enjoy that book to the level with which I did. And yet it is <sighs> so good. So, so good. Okay. Okay. And so then at this point, and you'll notice the shift that happens um, in terms of how the spreads are set up from this point on, because this is when I actually started logging as I was experiencing, right? So I, I jumped into this book at, at this point in time. So let's see anything here. I watched the Keep Breathing mini series, which was really good. Kept reading Jane Eyre, finished Jane Eyre, I think here. So good. Let's see. When stumped by a life choice, choose enlargement over happiness. Do not ask, will this make me happy? Ask. Will this choice enlarge me or diminish me? That came from a, I think it was a Substack, maybe. I don't know why I didn't write the source. I usually do, uh, but 
did I not write it? I don't think I wrote it down. I need to figure out. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Uh, but yes, this was a quote that I really, really enjoyed. I remember talking to my best friend about it, about how this was like kind of like an epiphany moment for me. Don't ask, will it make me happy? Will it enlarge me or diminish me? I think, and the article was so good. I wish I would have written the source. I might be able to find it just based on the quote itself, but yeah, there's that. And then since I finished Jane Eyre, the movie, I decided, I'm sorry, the book, I decided that I was going to watch every single adaptation of Jane Eyre. So that, that's what begins. <laughs> um, so you'll see a lot of Jane Eyre related things in the next couple of spreads. So you see Jane Eyre. Um, and let's see some Gilmore Girls. I was rewatching Gilmore Girls. And then you'll notice that I have these little squares, which is what this um, little reference is for. For those of you who don't know, uh, I kept repeating the square so often and having to recount every single time. So I just make myself a little cheat sheet, which I didn't often reference, but it was there in case I needed it. More Jane Eyre, My Hero Academia. I really liked the spread. I watched X and Pearl. Oh, Friday the 13th was one of the ones from that book. Uh, was really good. Never had never watched that before. Let's see. Some more Jane Eyre. I watched last year all of Mike Flanagan's shows on Netflix. Best time and worst time of my life. Bly Manor literally destroyed me. I know that a lot of people prefer Hill House. But actually towards the end of the year, and I'm skipping ahead, but towards the end of the year, I read Hill House, the original, and a lot of people will argue and say that they prefer the show over the book. They are two separate forms of media. Um, that's something that happens a lot with Flanagan is that he will adapt um, a piece of media, but it is not the same. Like they're not supposed to be direct representations of each other. And so you get that in Haunting of Hill House where a lot of people will say, Mostly this happens to those that watch the the show first and then read the book. They don't really like the book. But for me, I felt like I really enjoyed the book. I don't get me wrong. I love the show as well. I do definitely lean towards Bly as being my favorite though. Um, but I loved Shirley Jackson's book like so much. I think I probably even lean towards the book more so than the show. But that's not to say that I don't like both. I, I love both. So... Don't get, don't get it twisted. <laughs> oh, and then I started Spoopy Season with Hocus Pocus. Oh, love it. Some more stickers. Really like this. Oh, I watched the Fear Street trilogy. If you are into horror, definitely watch the Fear Street trilogy. They're so fun. They are so fun. I actually want to rewatch that. Oh, and then I started the Scream um, series as well. I had watched Scream 1, but I had not watched anything else. So I watched up to 6. I didn't watch 7 because of what happened with Melissa Barrero. We're on strike there, but... Watched Ready or Not, which I had been wanting to watch for years. I never watched it before. Final Destination movies. Watched all the Final Destination movies. Gotta say, when I was younger... I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but when I was younger, I was traumatized by Final Destination 3. Like, extremely traumatized. Um... I don't know who was watching it that I caught a glimpse of the nail scene and it traumatized me for the rest of my life. Among many other things, there's I've, I was traumatized a lot as a child. I'm telling you, I was a security cat as a kid. But I do have to say Final Destination 3 is the best of all of them. Like 100%. I do really like the first and the second one for what they are, but gotta say the third one definitely is the best one. So you live and you learn. Oh, I really love this spread. I think I actually... Uh, decorated this spread on camera was one I think it was one of my first videos probably Ooh, and this is when Fall of the House of Usher came out I think I watched Fall of the House of Usher in its entirety two times last year I'm an Edgar Allan Poe fan and I really did enjoy the series I loved that it was an adaptation of multiple Edgar Allan Poe stories into one and not just a direct retelling of the Fall of the House of Usher even though that's its title uh, story um but yeah really loved that uh watched happy death day which was super fun <laughs> i really enjoyed that one and british bake-off i was watching the british bake-off which finally was available on netflix we love the bake-off in this house let's see uh, continuing with mike flanagan we got midnight club and then midnight mass which midnight mass was not what i thought it was about let me tell you and it was so good i gotta say i don't know which one I think I like the most 
of the ones that I've watched. So Bly Manor, Hill House, Midnight Club, Midnight Mass, and Follow the House of Usher are the five that I watched from Netflix of Mike Flanagan's filmography in terms of like shows. Mm, I think, I think probably Midnight Mass might be my favorite. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. I definitely cried like a baby. And I'm a crier. I, I cry for like, my, my way of determining whether a piece of media is good or not is whether it elicited an emotional reaction from me. So the more that I cry, the better. But Bly Manor literally had me in shambles. So in terms of crying, I gotta say that Bly Manor does take the cake. But I do think narratively, and Flanagan has said this himself, that it's his masterpiece, right? Like, it's his favorite of all of the ones that he's worked on. I do think Midnight Mass takes the cake. Oh, here I was finishing up the other uh, Final Destination ones. I watched The Lighthouse, which I had been wanting to watch for many years and gotta say was not... I didn't have that good of a time with it, which was is really sad to say because I have been really wanting to look forward to it. It is a good vibe, but... I don't know. I just it think I think it went over my head. Maybe I'm just not smart enough. I don't know. Um, I also have a short for this one. I love this spread. It's so green and beautiful. And at this point, it was already fall. So I think I was like needing some green in my life. And a lot of these stickers are stickers that I made. So it was just so nice. Oh, and then this is where I started Daily Dust of Sunshine, which is a Korean drama that also wrecked me into little tiny pieces. Let's see. More British bake off uh daily dose of sunshine oh and this is when i started the yellow jackets yellow jackets was such an experience like the twist and turns i was shook i'm one of those people that will guess a plot twist from a mile away i'm really good at like figuring out what's going to happen in a story and when i tell you that multiple times yellow jackets threw me for a loop Good stuff. Good stuff. Bird by Bird, which I am still painfully going through. I talked about Bird by Bird in my recent video. Let's see. Yellow Jackets. I watched the Johnny Depp version of Charlie and the Chocolate... The, okay. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Some more stickers. I love the, st the spreads. Oh, I love this these stickers. Let's see. I watched Midsummer which another movie that I had really been wanting to watch for a long time. And honestly, I don't know how I feel about it still to this day. Yeah, it was just, I don't know. I don't, I still don't know. And I watched this back in December and I, I, ugh, just icky. Just, I, ugh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Let's see what else here. Some rewatching of Hill House. Oh, no, actually, this was me. Okay, so, sorry. I don't think I meant... I don't think I've talked about in this one that my... Um, for those of you who don't know, I do have a color coding system. Wow, talk about late in the game. I have a color coding system, so you can see it here and you can see it in the cheat sheet. Books are brown, manga and manhwa are yellow. Fanfic is this burgundy-ish color. Movies is purple, TV show is uh, pink, and podcast is blue, right? And so from a glance, like, so for example, me that I had watched... A Hill House. Where are we? No. Hill House here. You can see I watched Hill House here and it is uh, pink. So you can see that that's a show versus here where it's Hill House. And I mean, here you see chapter. So you can infer that it is a book. And here you see episode. So you can infer that it is a TV show. But just from a glance, you can see that this is a book. Right. So this is when I started the actual Hill House book, which was so good. I... I really was not expecting, again, because I heard so many people uh, when I was first introduced to Hill House talk about how they didn't enjoy the book, that the show was so much better. So I really went into the book thinking that I wasn't going to like it as much. And I love the book so much. So good. Definitely recommend it. Um, They are two different things, right? Like, don't expect them. And I think that's where the pitfall is, right? People who were watching the show that then went in to the book expecting something that they didn't get and you know expectations um and then i started adventure time in december 5th i just oh, i just finished december uh december i just finished adventure time i think two or three days ago the main show 
and the two spinoffs, uh, Distant Lands and Fiona and Cake. I, I think I finished it maybe two or three days ago. Uh, so it's nice to see when it was that I started. I ha was actually curious about whether I had started it last year or not. So there's my answer. Let's see here. Oh, this beautiful blue. I was, I was rewatching Boys Over Flowers, which was like the first K-drama I ever watched uh, back in high school. I was rewatching it because I needed some pick-me-up. Rewatching Fall of the House of Usher. Um, some essays. Let's see. What else? What else? Boys Over Flowers. Randomly watched some episodes of Billy and Mandy. <laughs> Just randomly out of nowhere. Um, let's see. Some more Hill House. Common Shapes podcast. This Trash Boy song by Flying a Boss. She says, you get what you accept, not what you deserve. And that to me, what like blew my mind. So I put it in there. And the last spread, which as I mentioned, um, I haven't filled out yet. <laughs> so I have to go in and actually fill this out so that I can close off the year. And then we get into what is my commonplace section or it's not really my commonplace section. It's so much it was, as it was a collection of quotes from things that I enjoyed. My commonplace has evolved since then and there's gonna be a video for that, but sneak peek, um, the commonplace is gonna be moving into um, my traveler's notebook system or something similar to what you guys would call a commonplace system. Um, but it first started off here, right? Uh, as my collection of words, because as you know, I love collecting words. So that's where it started off. And I'm not gonna read all of them because there's so many. Uh, but feel free to pause and read them if you would like. Uh, you can make the screen full screen and be able to see it better. If there's any that you would like me to, if you would like me to go more in depth with these in a commonplace like review or a quote review, let me know and I can do that. Um, but just like, for example, here, I have like song lyrics. Um, I have a quote here. I read a lot of Substack newsletters, so I do tend to... Uh, copy some of those in here. Um, so this one from Annie Dillard, The Writing Life. How we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. What we do, th what we do with this hour and that one is what we are doing. A schedule defends from chaos and whim. It is a net for catching days. It is a scaffolding on which a worker can stand and labor with both hands at sections of time. A schedule is a mock-up of reason and order, willed, faked, and so brought into being. It is a piece and a haven set into the wreck of time. It is a lifeboat on which you find yourself decades later still living. Ooh, and then this one is a quote from a video I was watching on Tumblr that I really, re on Tumblr, on TikTok, that I really, really, really liked. So I went ahead and put it in here. And like, I would never remember to go into my saved on TikTok and find this specific quote. But since it's here, I can come across it whenever I want, which is why I value collecting words so much because like where else am I going to find these I'm not going to go back and I think that's the pitfall of digital the digital lives that we live right is that when are you going to scroll through the millions of photos that you have on your phone I and I'm not I know I'm not the only one I screenshot things all the time to reference and then I forget I have the screenshot like writing things down makes it so much easier for you to just go back and reference later in a way that you would not do with your digital means and maybe you would right like and four for you if you do like four for you can coco if you do that but i suck at that <laughs> so for me writing it down is the way to go it is the way to go oh some notes on notebooks uh which i guess applies here right so i'll share it when i am writing by hand the material insists back at me it makes me do things like break a line but not only and it does things to me like suggest relations across space and time. Like what? When I am writing by hand, the material insists back at me. Like that, oh, so good. So, oh, so what I was saying about, <laughs> sorry, I got off tangent. Um, what I was saying about this quote from TikTok, um, sometimes if you rot for a while, the mushrooms that grow back make you stronger. So nice. Oh, and then here are my reviews. There's a lot of Jane Eyre commentary that happens throughout here, and I will not be reading that because that's too much, but I do have a lot of reviews of the Jane Eyre book and the Jane Eyre adaptations and what I liked and didn't like about that. So there's also some reviewing that's happening across here. This kind of became like a catch-all for just random thoughts, um, but yeah, 
that's that's what I wanted to say <laughs> on that, I guess. Uh, so yeah, more Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre, the two-headed calf poem. If you haven't found, or if you haven't read the two-headed calf poem, please do that. I'm not going to read it here. It's by Laura Gilpin. Please look it up. It's a very famous poem. If you haven't read it, it is chef's kiss. Some lyrics, um, some more quotes, some more stuff on Jane Eyre, some more stuff on Jane Eyre. This is the uh, 96 adaptation. Some washi tape that I bought in Belfast, as I mentioned. This is a quote uh, from... Yeah, I was hanging out with a friend of mine who's older and she carries a newspaper clipping of this quote and I liked it so much that I, uh, I wrote it down. And actually, I think I will read this to you because... Ooh, sorry. I will read this to you because I don't think you'd be able to find this anywhere else because it was a newspaper clipping. Um, says, the interchange between us captured my mind, conversations and joking, doing favors for each other, reading together good books, being foolish and being serious together, disagreeing without hatred, almost as though I was debating with myself. These and so many other like signs coming from the heart of friends are shown through their eyes and mouths and speech and a thousand little gestures. All of these expressions of friendship brought our hearts together like bundled kindling, making one out of many. True friends bear each other's burdens and accept each other's weaknesses because without reciprocity, there is nothing. Friendship is about collaboration, not domination. Because we should be stewards of each other's rooms, I am happy to help you keep yours clean. But life is too fleeting to let you continue trashing mine. It's so good. It's on friendship and just... Ugh, I love it so much. It's from a... Uh, St. Augustine of Hippo, Confessions, 1600 plus years ago. And then you can see my issues with fountain pen ink. I, I have my issues with fountain pen ink. This bothers me so much. Oh my goodness. Um, this is a personal analysis that I made on Jane Eyre. Once again, these are some stickers that my sister gave me that I wanted to put in here because they are super cute. Info that I uh, liked, a quote from Candy, from Candy, a quote from Brandy Kincaid. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, amusing that I saw someone talk about when they were uh, reading The Artist's Way that I had never thought about before. So I put that in there. Another quote from Tumblr. Not Tumblr. Why do I keep calling it Tumblr? Another quote from a video I saw on TikTok. Um, and then this is some images that I printed that I just went ahead and blocked out. Um, some other images. I got a figure in that uh, week. So I pasted in the picture. Some more images. So here you can see that I started like pasting in images more so than just text um, for no reason other than I wanted to. <laughs> Uh, let's see. This was for October. These are some images from the leaks night that changed my life. This is okay. If you're not caught up in the My Hero manga, don't, don't, don't read this. But yeah, this night changed my life <laughs> so, as a My Hero fan. Um, some more quotes from Substack, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I didn't end up finishing this, and I won't be doing that either this is my pixel tracker which is something that i do need to finish so i just need to finish adding in the dots for december and then that's done uh some testing pages and this little bookmark that i've had for years for tinkerbell that i just added in here as a emotional support thing and then this is just a little supplement that i have where i listed all of the pieces of media individually by uh, category that is it not also done. And I don't know if I'll ever get to it, to be honest, we'll see. So that's that, that is the flip through. Um, now I will go ahead and um, do the actual flip and then do some close-ups for those of you who want to see that. Um, thank you so much for spending this time with me going through this flip through. From just the recording, I am at about 45-ish minutes at this point of just raw footage. Obviously, that's going to go down a bit with editing, but thank you so much. This is a longer video, even though I had inten intended for it to be shorter. <laughs> but I get a little um, 
caught up talking about media as you as you know so thank you so much for watching the video i hope that you enjoyed it that you got some inspiration uh if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments if you want to talk about any of the pieces of media that i talked about definitely leave it in the comments i always want to talk about media and yeah thank you so much enjoy the flip through and i will catch you in the next one bye Appalachian sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in Golden, golden. I'll follow home Golden, golden Golden, golden things in spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing golden I'll follow golden 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 things gold hair gold ring Golden, golden things. Golden, I follow only gold.